Welcome back. The National Football League draft starts tomorrow. Yes, the first round Thursday night coming up really soon. But the big question in our area, will Dallas Goddard make some South Dakota State University history by becoming the highest draft pick ever for the Jackrabbits? So we think we know a guy who can talk a little bit about that. Tom Neiman joins us for some answers, Tom. And we think we know the answer to this, yes. <laughs> uh, Zach Zenner, Brian Witzman, Adam Vittiteri, there's three Jacks in the NFL right now. All those guys were free agents, weren't even draft picks. Uh, go back to the 90s, Doug Miller, Adam Timmerman. In the early 90s, they were both seventh round draft picks. The highest pick the Jacks have had in the last 40 years was Steve Hyden, another tight end who went in the third round in 1999. So yes, we believe Goddard is going to be the highest draft pick ever. Luke Schleisner is the tight ends coach at South Dakota State. We, uh, State. we talked with him this week about how Goddard has gone from little known walk on as a freshman to pro prospect coming out of his senior season and why Goddard has a leg up right now on the other tight ends in this year's draft. South Dakota State has had pro prospects in football in the past, but not like this one. I've uh, you know never had a guy a guy like this before. You know I've had guys that have, have gone on and played at the next level, but to be a you know projected first to second round draft pick, um, I mean it's just exciting and it's great for the program. Um, you know his his profile is really raising the profile of South Dakota State uh, just with all the national attention he's getting and. Um, you know, it's exciting and he put in a lot of hard work, so he, he deserves it. Schleisner and the Jackrabbit coaching staff deserve some credit as well. They took some pretty raw material and turned a talented but unfocused young man into arguably the best player at his position last season in college football. When he was a freshman, he had a long ways to go and, uh, you know, it was definitely a learning curve. Uh, and it took him a while at the beginning, you know, he, he didn't, uh, it, it took him a while and it took me in his ear uh, to, get, to get things going. Um, but, you know, by the time he was a junior, he was like another coach on the field. Uh, you know, and that's really one of his biggest strengths is his football IQ. So uh, it's been a lot of fun as a coach. You know, he's kind of that, that prize student that you see start out uh, at the bottom and then just take off and excel. And uh, it, it was fun. It was a fun process. Goddard is six foot five, weighed 230 pounds when he got on campus at SDSU. Beefed up to about 245 as a sophomore, and that is when he started to show signs of what he would become. As a sophomore, he was first team all conference, and you know I kind of thought he could be a later round draft pick uh, coming out of his sophomore. You know, or he had that projection that you know if he keeps up on this rate, he could be a fifth, sixth round draft pick. And he met with me after in our exit meeting and said he wanted to play in the NFL. And I just said, well, if, if your goal is really to play in the NFL, I'm like, don't wait, you know, get after it now. And he had, uh, you know, uh, took his commitment to another level in the weight room, took his commitment to another level on the football field and just really took off. And, uh, you know, and now, you know, like I said, I thought after sophomore year, maybe fifth, sixth round draft pick. And then after his junior year, it was like, holy, holy cow, we've got a, a special player on our hands. He got up to 250 pounds and strong like a bull as a junior. Over 1,200 yards receiving, 11 touchdowns, and set the school record with 92 catches. He was slowed by injuries as a senior, but still team leader in catches and in yards, in an offense built around his capabilities with or without the football in his hands. And that versatility is what has attracted a lot of the attention. NFL teams see more than just the fancy catches. Some of these tight ends now are mainly receivers and they, they hardly block. Where Dallas is a physical guy, he's really strong, uh, he can handle himself at the line of scrimmage as well. So I think that's the thing the NFL guys see is that he's a true you know, three down tight end. They don't need to hide him or, or put him to the side and blocking plays. You know, he, he can really do it all. So uh, you know, I think that's the thing NFL teams are beginning is the complete package. Draft experts, of course, can point out the shortcomings and the weaknesses and some legitimate criticisms of how Goddard can be better, the physical things. But Goddard, despite his rep as a bit of a class clown, should be able to handle the mental game in the NFL. He's a really smart guy. Uh, I know he tested out really well on his wonder lick. Um, and he's a great student, you know, uh, coming out of here. Um, you know, he just, he just likes to have fun, so, you know, I think he started out as a mechanical engineer and that was a little too much homework and uh, switched over to construction management. Um, but he's, he's a smart guy and, uh, you, you know, he, he's really sharp. I think he has a good base, it's just adjusting to the speed of the game. You know, similar, you know, high school to college is a big jump, well college to the NFL, it's another big jump. So the speed of the game will take a while to get adjusted to. 
but you know, I, I think with uh, his football IQ, uh, I think he's going to be able to pick up fast. You know, because that's the other challenge is getting the playbook down. Um, but you know, he he's really sharp in, in the uh, with his football IQ. And Schleisner, who has mentored Goddard over the past four years, will be with his prized pupil on draft day to see what happens next. I'm going to go meet up with Dallas. Uh, you know, he's having a family gathering up uh, near Britain. And, um, you know, go hang out. And, and hopefully it's Thursday. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully it's Thursday that it happens. And we'll see. You know, okay, it could be uh, Friday as well. But um, I know he's excited and just ready to go and, you know, ready to kind of see where this process, uh, where he ends up. All right, I, I talked to another coach today who recruited Goddard to play basketball at an NAIA school and really thought that they had a chance to get him to do that. And that gives you an idea, Kelly, of how much football attention that Goddard got coming out of high school at Britain Hecla, which wasn't a whole lot at that time, but kind of yeah. shows you the rags to riches story that has been uh, Goddard. Yeah, definitely a great story. And a lot of fans around here would love to see Goddard on their NFL team, of course. But Dallas talked to our Elena Lanson during the SDSU spring game actually last Friday. And if he had his choice, this is where he would go. All right, Dallas, dream team that you could be put on. Uh, my dream team would be the Green Bay Packers. Playing with Aaron Rodgers would be incredible. I mean, uh, one of the best quarterbacks to do it. So uh, if I could go to the Packers, that'd be a dream come true. Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, you know, it's a life-changing experience, something that, I mean, every little kid dreams of and not very many people get the opportunity. So uh, I was blessed with uh, everything I've had and the path that it took me, I'm uh, really glad. But no, it's going to be a really exciting day, weekend for me. All right, what are your plans for draft day? Got to hear about them. Yeah, I'm going to be back home uh, with family and a few friends from up here are coming and, you know, just kind of hanging out with family, playing a few games, uh, trying not to sit there and watch my phone the whole time, even though that's more than likely uh, what's going to happen. But uh, like I said earlier, I'm so excited for that day and it's going to be incredible. Packers. Would be Woo! Cool. Yeah, I was right. so pumped about that. Where it's impossible to tell where he's going to end up, but Nate Gary from Sioux Falls, Washington, said last year he had no idea that the Eagles were even going to think about taking him in the draft, yeah. so you never know. Baltimore has had a lot of interest in Goddard this year, came to practices, came to games. Uh, they had uh, coaches at his pro day in Brookings, or at the pro day in Brookings. Baltimore's got the 16th pick, though, and unlikely they're going to jump on Goddard at that point. I guess, I'm not, my guess is he goes to Jacksonville, with the 29th pick in the first round. You heard it here first. Just a guess. Right. I mean, that's it. <laughs> we'll first see. round, we'll see if it happens Thursday. All right, great stuff. Thank you so much, Tom. Thanks, Dewey. Next on the show, a quick look at what's to come for the remainder of the week right here on Midco Sports Tonight. Stick around.